surrounded by his neighborhood where stands a, excuse me, our third speaker is going to tell us a story surrounded by his neighborhood where stands a large open fortress known in the city of Chicago as Friendly Confines. How does a five-year-old immerse himself with his brothers in an incredible adventure and meet one of the most well-known athletic celebrities of his day? Please welcome Toastmaster Tim Rickey with his speech titled Wrigleyville. It was a morning such as this, about the same time of day. And I rose that morning and said, Mom, I want to go see if the Cubs are playing today. Can I go? She said, yes, go down to the corner, but you come right back. So I went under the back porch. I took off my little red flyer wagon, got in there, put my one knee in, and I pushed myself down to the corner. I get down there, and I look up to the east. I'm looking for the scoreboard. I'm looking for the American flag, because if it's up, the Cubs are playing that day. I look up and, sure enough, the Cubs are playing. I'm back in, I push myself back home. As I'm approaching our apartment, my brother's coming out, my brother Lynn and Jim. Jim is my older brother, Lynn, the one next to me, right after me. He said, we're going down to the ballpark. Mom said, we'd go. So I said, Mom, can I go with him? She said, all right, boys, go down there, but do not go and interfere with the people that are putting out and picking up the tarps on the infield. So the three of us go down to the corner, they ask it, and we turn left, we go towards the ballpark. If you go right, you go to Clark Street, and they go two blocks and you find out the place that Alpha Bone did his bad day down at Valentine's Day. That was the neighborhood we were in. So we get down there and Jim, we cross the railroad track. There's a fire station right at the corner. He looks both ways, takes us both across, and there's the, the stadium, Wrigley Field. The friendly confines is what is the name comes from. It comes from Wrigley Field, just so you know. It isn't just a restaurant chain. So we get there now, there's this big metal gate in front of the place where you buy it where you go through the turnstiles. But we had a secret that little kids know that nobody else did. It was about this high off the ground at the bottom. So we'd shimmy underneath. So I shimmied in first, and then Lynn, and then my brother Jim, and this was the last time he's gonna do this because he's getting bigger. But we go in and we dart down, go out, up the stairs, out into the field, and right away to the dugout. I wonder if there's any big league stuff here. Maybe a baseball bat or, or a cap, something like that. So we go through and look into it, nothing. There's nothing there, we can't find anything. So we get out, now we're gonna have our fun. You see they have these big cylinders along the walls where they wrap the infield tarps that cover the infield at night up and then they slide them back. But we get inside, because we know what's coming next. That's when the, those people are coming out to roll those things up. So we get inside and they're playing this game with us and they're rolling it and we're bouncing around and this was this is our Disney World back in those days. So we're bouncing around and they're getting just covered with soot. You know, a lot of dirt out there. And then, you know, all right, you three, get out of there. Come on, come on, come on. We haven't got time for this stuff. So we climb out, we're all laughing, the field hands as well as ourselves. And then we'd head back up into the park. And in the middle of the outside area, there's a spiral going all the way up to the top of Wrigley Field. Now, when you're five years old, this is a big deal. <laughs> So we work our way up to the top and you get up there and it's amazing because you look to the, the west and you see these tops of these churches with copper and some of them are turning green as they age. And you look to the left and it's, wow, where'd all that water come from? Yeah. It's called Lake Michigan. <laughs> and so that was fun. Then we'd come down, work our way back down, and then the hot dog guy is setting up outside. That's what we call the hot dog guy. And we go, man, they have anything to eat today. <laughs> Come on, give us a hot There's three little kids begging this guy. He's all right, you guys. All right, listen. We'll get you a hot dog. You don't tell anybody I was giving away my dog. You got it? You got it? Yes, sir, we got it. Okay. We take our hot dog and then we work our way back home. And mom would see right away, well, I guess we don't need to feed you this morning. You've already had your meal. So get those shirts off. Let's get them in the washing machine and we'll take your naps. Now, the following day, I go down to the ballpark with them. But I stay this time, because I'm fascinated by a thing called dry ice. When they dump it out at the end of the day, it's, you know, all those clouds are coming up. But then I wait outside where the players leave, and I'm waiting for the players to come out, because we want to get autographs for these players. And I'm wondering, can we do this? So out they come, and by the time I got, I got there, I'm waiting back, because I'm the littlest one there. And everybody was gone, except one player was coming out, and he was a big guy. 
and a big number 42 on his shirt on his jersey and i didn't know who he was i'd never seen him before but he, there was something about a bee on his uniform so i figured out when i heard the announcer say brooklyn he must be from brooklyn dodgers he came out and we talked a little bit he was really kind very easy going kind of guy and he said you want my autograph i said can i have it please with him he said sure so he sat down and grabbed a piece of paper and a pencil there were no ballpoint pens back in those days. And he took a piece of paper and he wrote on it. And I've got it right here. I've had it all these years. I wonder what it would be worth on eBay, you know? It says, from Jackie to Timmy. Wow. Can you imagine having that? Something that got autographed at one of the most famous baseball times. You know who I'm talking about? Anybody know? Jackie Robinson. Please, thank you. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson, yes. Who was the first man of the, the league? Um, the thing was, was, I'd go to the ballpark after that, and I'd sneak in through the turnstiles because they got there too late to sneak in. And one day I got caught. This guy grabs me by the shirt and he pulls me back. I got you. I got you this time. What's your name? I said, Timmy, sir. Hey, your last name? Ricky. Ricky? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, kid. What's going on here? So then, and all the vendors start beating me. I'm getting sick every day. I go to the fire station across the street and Pete, the fireman, put me two two captain's chairs to take my nap. If I didn't toss my cookies, and they did that once, and then all of them tossed their cookies. But the interesting thing is, what happened here is, who was the man that started the baseball farm system? Does anybody know? Ricky. Branch His name was Branch Ricky. So I think the assumption was that I he was my grandfather. Was he? Well, I don't know. Is his signature real? I don't know. I'll leave it to you. Mr. Tosman. Ah. <laughs>